With all this talk about the S24 Ultra, and yes, I have contributed to it massively, I think certain smartphones are being forgotten about. And the one that I want to talk about today is this. A couple of weeks ago, Google sent me this brand new mint green Pixel 8 Pro, and I really like the color. It's a very kind of faded, pastel-y hue. I think, personally, it's better looking than the bay blue color. That's interesting because the bay blue Pixel 8 Pro was my best looking smartphone of 2023. And it very narrowly missed out on the Smartphone of the Year Award, the coveted Mark Ellis Reviews Smartphone of the Year Award, only because the Honor 90 is such good value. However, there is a new kid on the block, I've got so many phones in front of me, which is the S24 Ultra. And I think, I'm gonna go on record now and say this, I think it, it is the best smartphone smartphone I've ever used. And that leaves one very big question for this big Pixel fanboy. Where does that leave the Pixel 8 Pro? Okay, so first I need to explain why I love the Pixel so much. And to do that, I need to dig into this drawer of smartphones. So there's loads of X smartphone, X, loads of X review. There's loads of smartphones in this drawer. And somewhere in here oh, no. is ah, this, which is the Pixel 4a. And it was my first experience of the Pixel phone thing. This phone was just £349. And in a world where we spend about, well, over a thousand pounds at least on a flagship smartphone. That for me was a complete revelation. And yes, there's no official IP rating with it. The design is a bit plasticky. The display is so-so, but the camera system, my word, that camera system completely blew me away. And it was my first experience of a completely unbutchered version of Android. And since then, every single iteration of the Pixel, and I have tried all of them, has got better and better and better. So for instance, the A series, and I think this is the 7A, they are starting to look fairly similar and I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed. The A series continues to deliver massive value, even though the price is creeping up a little bit. And the regular eight in this case, which is, where's the eight? Is it that one? No. Anyway, the regular eight and the Pixel 8 Pro, just like the seven and the seven Pro, are one of those rare Android smartphones that I want to use all the time. I can't because I'm an iPhone sheep. I'm an idiot who is stuck in the Apple ecosystem. I talked about this in the S24 Ultra video, which I'll link to above, so you can watch that and call me an idiot in the, in the comments. Something else to note about Pixel devices is that they do catch the eye of onlookers. This is quite rare these days. The Honor 90 does it because it looks so unusual and very interesting. The iPhone isn't interesting, I'm afraid. Whereas for some reason, this design, this kind of whatever you want to call it, I genuinely really love this design. But there's something about this that is interesting enough for people to comment on it. And I have a sneaking suspicion that these phones are influencing something, something I've spotted a lot recently. I've bored you rigid about how much I love the Pixel camera system, so I won't gush about it too much in this video, but there is something I've spotted recently which I just have to get off my chest. And I'm gonna show you two photos. This first one is from the S24 Ultra. Now take a look at this and tell me that doesn't look like a Pixel photo. There's just something about the character of this photo that screams Pixel. And here's another one from the Honor Magic V2, which is my favorite foldable so far. Again, I think this looks incredibly Pixel. Pixel, very much like the Pixel. It's uncanny, don't you think? And I know I said I wasn't gonna gush about the Pixel camera system again in this video, but just allow me this. It's been a while since I've been on a photo tour with the Pixel 8 Pro, so I thought, why not take this mint green version on a tour of Leamington Spa, which is where I live. You've probably never heard of it, but it's a very lovely town and there's some lovely photo opportunities. I've tried to suss out why I love Pixel photos so much and I've never really got to the bottom of it. I think it's the drama that's introduced into these images and if anything that has been dialed down a little bit over the last two generations but it's still there. If you've ever used Lightroom you'll be aware of the clarity slider which introduces a lot of contrast and just something to the image that really makes it pop off the screen. Now this isn't for everyone some people will think these images are too way too contrasty too sharpened and just a bit too much but that's why smartphone photography is massively subjective. You might even think that these photos lack 
lack vibrancy and saturation, but for me, they're perfect. And yes, of course, we have a 5X zoom to play with on the Pixel 8 Pro, and no, I cannot stop using it. Although I am a big fan of the ultra wide as well on the Pixel 8 Pro, it's my favorite ultra wide of any camera system. The other thing the Pixel 8 Pro has in its favor these days is video boost. I've not had much time to play with this, but I'll give you some examples of it with it turned on and turned off now. This is basically a server-based processing for video. So you shoot the video on your Pixel 8 Pro, it then sends that video to Google servers. Google servers do some clever stuff with it and then send it back down to your Pixel. The results are pretty impressive, particularly in night mode. It's just one of those things where Google is one step ahead of Apple because you don't get this with the iPhone. I never get into the details of pixel binning and cropping into sensors and all that stuff because I just don't care. What I do care about is how good the photos are that come out of these cameras. And for me, the Pixel just nails it every single time. I said I wouldn't gush about it, didn't I? Sorry. Let's talk about the January Pixel update because that is quite exciting. We didn't just get this mint green color in January. Google also issued a, what they call a feature drop. And the timing was impeccable because it happened at just the same time, funnily enough, as the launch of the S24 Ultra. So th this happens all the time. Samsung comes out in January and says, check us out, we've got a new phone. And then Google says, hey, and then other people get involved. Basically it worked. It turned my attention back to the Pixel 8 Pro. The slight challenge with this feature drop is that not all of these features are available in the UK yet, so I can't show you all of them. One that I can show you is Circle to Search. And weirdly, this appeared on the S24 first, I don't know why. And the premise is really simple. If you take a photo of something, you spot something on an Instagram feed or a web page, and you want to know what it is, you hold down the bottom of the screen on the Pixel 8 Pro and then circle it. And once you've circled that object, Google tells you what it is. Circle to search may not be of any use to you whatsoever, but I have found it very handy in certain situations, and it's just an example of AI doing something that is very useful. The next update relates to the temperature sensor on the back of the Pixel 8 Pro, and this was a weird addition last year because, okay, you could take the temperature of a surface of something and of the food you're cooking, but that was it, and equally, why? I think the intention that Google had with this is starting to become clear because if you live in the US, you can now use that temperature sensor to take the temperature of yourself. The way it works apparently is that you go into the temperature app on here and then motion the phone across your forehead. But like I say, I can't test that yet because it doesn't work in this country. The January update also included photo emoji support in messages, which is very similar, in fact, almost identical to the same thing in iOS, where you can take any subject from a photo and turn it into an emoji. And then you can use that emoji in future messages. I've never found a use for this, but then I am 43. There's also Magic Compose, which has come to the Messages app. And again, for some reason, I can't test that because it's not on this phone. The idea is that it uses AI to give you some help with the tone of your messages. Google has renamed Nearby Share to Quick Share, and this is a very airdrop-like thing where you can basically transfer anything from one pixel to another pixel and Chrome OS and Windows. I don't think there's Mac support for this yet, but if that existed, wow, I, I could potentially leave the iPhone. And that's all the good stuff about the Pixel. I think to, to balance out this long-term review, I should, I should give you a couple of gripes, shouldn't I? That, that I've got to say a few bad things about this phone. The first thing to mention is that all of my gripes with the Pixel 8 Pro are design related, which sounds weird because it was my best looking smartphone of 2023, but hear me out. Firstly, it's the slippiest smartphone I've ever used. This matte glass back looks beautiful, but it's so slippery. It demands a case. Part of the reason for that is the camera housing which again is very iconic, I'm a big fan of this, scratches way too easily. Google, please, please change this going forward. I would love to see a much more non-scratchable camera housing. The power button feels like it's in the wrong place, so it sits just above the volume rocker, and I'm always pressing volume down and then thinking, why isn't the screen turning off before realizing that the power button is above it? And that's it. There's nothing else I don't like about this phone. I think the S24 Ultra is the phone to beat in 2024. I do think it's the best smartphone I've ever used. However, the Pixel 8 Pro comes a very 
close second. And there are some renders doing the rounds at the moment of the Pixel 9 Pro. It looks lovely. So I have very high hopes of the Pixel line in 2024, but I would love to know if you've bought a Pixel 8 Pro or if you're on the fence about buying one, what is it about that phone that catches your attention? Why do you either love it or why are you so tempted to buy one? Let me know down below. And the reason I've brought you into the kitchen is because this video isn't sponsored, but I do have some very lovely brand partners who help me run this channel and literally keep these lights on. One of them is Gadgia, and Gadgia make the coffee machine and the beans that you're sitting on at the moment. Yes, it's expensive, but they do have a big range with lots of different options for different budgets. I've worked with Gadgia to get some really interesting discounts. So if like me, you are fueled by coffee, go check it out. The link is just down below, and if you've still got some time, hang around for another link to my full review of the S24 Ultra, just to find out what this is up against. Now now it's coffee time.